It turns out that database sharding, Flickr, and MMOs actually have a lot of history together. Look, I know, I, you're surprised Flickr is still actually a thing. But you're also probably wondering how in the world these three things are related. When a lot of players are online in a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, or MMORPG, you'll probably find in one way or another, the game tends to push players to servers that aren't as full. And this is by design. A lot of MMOs are built to dynamically create new servers and balance the number of players on each machine. The goal here is to keep the number of players on any given server below a particular threshold. And this makes a ton of sense from a gameplay perspective. You don't want a ton of players in a small area. But also, because there are less players in any given server, it keeps requests down on the back end. Talk to any MMO fan and they'll tell you these different worlds are typically referred to as shards. Interestingly enough, before Flickr was a photo sharing site, it was an MMO called Game Game Never Ending. Game Never Ending was actually never launched, but some of this functionality is what led Flickr to becoming the photo sharing app we know and love today. Know and kind of love, kind of forgot. Anyway, back in the 2000s and with its gaming era behind them, Flickr started seeing exponential growth and needed the way to efficiently and affordably scale their database. So they turned to a scaling strategy they were already familiar with. Sharding. Just like a game server, when a database gets really big and is getting a lot of traffic, requests can slow down. To solve this, one option would be to upgrade your server specs. For example, more processing power, more RAM, etc. This is referred to as vertical scaling. This can work when you're in a pinch, but vertical scaling has its limits. Once you're maxed out on server specs, you're kind of stuck at that point. And plus, that monthly server bill won't be pretty. This is where database sharding comes in. So just like how MMOs divide players into smaller groups and place them on different servers, you can do the same thing with your data by splitting it into smaller chunks. Each of these shards can exist on its own server, giving you the horizontal scaling you're looking for, but without having to deal with massive amounts of duplicate data. In this example, your database is spread across five servers, which in theory reduces the number of requests hitting each server by 80%. And because each server holds a fraction of the data it used to, queries can become faster. Now, deciding how you split up your data is called your sharding strategy, and it's typically a direct function of how your business runs. For example, with a project management SaaS where every user belongs to a team, it'd probably make a lot of sense to shard on team level data. But let's say you're an e-commerce site and you're looking to shard your customer orders database. There really isn't a meaningful way to cluster this data. In that case, you'd likely want to use hash-based sharding on the order ID column. Hashing your shard key is a good idea for two reasons. It allows you to combine whatever data makes up your shard key into a consistent and repeatable token. And secondly, it will do a good job randomizing your shard key so you can be sure your data is distributed uniformly across shards. So with your data distributed across multiple servers, how will your app know which database to query? Well, the easiest solution is to add logic into your app that routes requests where they need to go. The takeaway here is to have the information that ties a piece of data to its destination encoded somewhere so that your app knows where to issue the query. So if you're following me to this point, you're probably starting to see that building a sharded database from scratch really isn't all that hard. But what if you need to add another machine or remove one? Each time you do that, you'll have to rebalance the shards. But rebalancing the shards means certain data may no longer exist on the same machine as it did before. So that means your routing logic in your app needs to be adjusted. As you can see, it's the operational maintenance of a sharded database that becomes the real issue over time. But what if I told you a truly managed database could handle all of that for you? With PlanetScale, you connect and interact with your entire sharded database cluster just like you would as if it were a single database. That means you're not worrying about resharding your database each time you scale up or down. It handles all of that for you. And that routing logic you added to your app, you can remove that entirely. PlanetScale intelligently handles all of that routing logic under the hood. You get all of the performance and cost benefits of a sharded database without the hassle. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope it gives you a little insight into what database sharding is and furthermore, what a service like PlanetScale is doing under the hood for you. As always, please subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Okay, so that didn't really work out. I think we're just gonna rely on fake Aaron for our send off. See ya.